everyone, it's Nick with Lab Code Agents, and this is a pretty cool episode of our webinar today. Uh, we've got the CEO of BrokerKit, which is a platform that I use personally to help me attract and retain talent uh, for my real estate office and real estate team. We've got Lacey Bibby, who works at BrokerKit. Um, she's not really sure exactly what her specific role is, but we know that she tells Jim what to do. So she is the chief smarty pants of broker kit. Mike Bernier is here. He's a familiar face in lab coats. He is one of the CEOs of Realty Group uh, in Minnesota, which is a, a real estate, independent real estate franchise, franchise, independent real estate company that's just blowing up. You guys have what, 500 agents at this point? Yep, 475 as of today. 475 agents as of today. Huge, huge, huge. And Mike is using BrokerKit at a high level to help him recruit and retain talent as well. So thank you everyone for being here. I'm excited to dive in and talk about this really hot and sometimes controversial topic. You hear the word recruit, never like, Ugh, right? It's like a four letter word. Um, but, but let's really get into, you know, why that's a controversial topic and why people tend to back away from it and why all of a sudden everyone's doing it at the same time, right? So thanks for being here, everyone. Thank you for having us, Nick. So I'm excited. I'm excited. So for people that don't know what BrokerKit is, let's just talk about that first. So Jim, I'll let you start. Yeah, sure. So uh, BrokerKit is a CRM designed from the ground up to be a recruiting and retention CRM for real estate brokers. So when you look out there in the marketplace, there's a lot of technology around uh, really focused on home sales for the agents. We felt that there was a big gap for the, the broker though, and building a system to help them scale up their team, right? Agents create value by selling homes. Brokers create value by scaling up their team of agents, which really comes down to recruiting and retention. So we worked with a, um, a broker who was a very prolific recruiter, built a very large team, kind of sat down with him, mapped out his workflow, and then built a system to, to automate it. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. So Lacey, um, I want you to chime in a little bit too. So uh, tell us a little bit more about how, what BrokerKit is doing, some of the different features, and then we'll get into more like actionable content. Yeah, absolutely. So um, like Jim was saying, we really just wanted to build something that was very streamlined. It's, it's actually two CRMs put together. So it's a recruiting CRM, but then it's also a retention CRM. So it helps with your communication from start of recruiting all the way through uh, communication with your agents and your in-house communication. Um, in terms of the recruiting side, you know, you're able to segment and target specific audiences based on their production, um, which you'll go into a little bit more about yeah. kind of the type of conversations you'll have with each type of production level. Um, but we have some, some big features like um, text and email drip campaigns. We have mass texting. Uh, and emailing, um, gosh, I'm, uh, we're oh, integrated with your Google Calendar. No, the thing that I love about, see, that's very, I was going to talk about when you, when you just brought up uh, that it differentiates different production levels very clearly, right? And so that's a really important uh, aspect to recruiting because where, and Mike, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but like where I feel a lot of recruiters or team leaders or broker owners, I feel a lot, where a lot of them fail and I've done this too, and I'm sure Mike, you have too, is they just make these calls or send these texts and they don't know who they're talking to. So I think, I think this is, and you just touched on this. First thing I want to back up and really go over what you said a minute ago of like, why is everybody now trying to recruit? Yeah, let's do that first. Perfect. You know, and let's, let's be honest, um, you know, whether you're, whether you're a small broker, a small team leader, a big team leader, a large broker, we have these conversations around recruiting. And so often people say, I'm just not ready to recruit or Look, I'm happy with my 10 agents. I don't really need to recruit. The reality is every single CEO of their company, that's what we all are, needs to continuously recruit. I don't care if you're comfortable with your 10 agents. What happens if you lose three of them? Um, what happens if you find three more that have way higher production or are better alignment, better fit, right? So if you're, if you're comfortable, that's already your first problem. You got to continue to recruit and find better talent. That's only going to increase the value of your organization, number one. Now, back to what you said, Nick, about, you know, the machine gun approach to recruiting, just making phone calls across the board. I think the first step in recruiting everybody should really pay attention to is to understand yourself, what your model is, who your ideal agent is, 
what you, what you really offer, what you, you know, what your value is, like figure out where you're trying to go. Cause you're not going to align with every single agent. There's a lot of team leaders and a lot of brokers that do, and this is a good example that their whole model is centered around brand new agents. That's what they're going to do really well with. That's what their system is set up for. You know, they're turning uh, brand new agents into 25 to 30 size per year producers. That's, that's their stick. Other ones do really well with call it the broken wing agent. You know, somebody that's been in the business two or three years, they never really took off. They're one foot in, one foot out, out half dead, half alive. And that, that's what they're going to revive them, right? So other ones are like, look, I service large teams and top producers. You don't have to have one or the other, but you do have to have a system and a support system and a mentality and an offering for each of those different kinds of buckets and many others. So before you start recruiting, a, know yourself and then know your, who your ideal customer is. So I think that's where we start instead of just operationalizing the efforts before we know those things. Yeah. No, I, I love, sorry, go ahead, Jim. Yeah, I was just going to add, you know, one of the questions I really love to ask brokers as we talk to them is what's an agent worth to you, right? And, you know, when I asked Mike that question, he, he told me that answer immediately. It's almost my favorite question to ask because if people know the answer, they will be recruiting. If they don't know the answer, they probably aren't because they don't realize how much value is created by bringing an agent into the organization. And, and it's a strong tell as to whether, if they can give that answer crisply, they probably have thought about it, they've run the numbers, they've realized how much upside there is to growing their, their talent. And they're probably out looking of, how, you know, what, how do I do it, right? What are the platforms? What are the methodologies? Where's the expertise? How do I implement a capability within, within my organization to do this on a repeated basis? You know, Mike, you, you said something really interesting before, and, and, and I love that you brought it up, where like so many, um, you know, so many broker owners uh, or team leaders, you know, like, like you said, they get comfortable with having this small company, which by the way, Nothing at all wrong with that, right? But on the flip side, you always have to be building your bench. You always have to be ready for the Mike Berniers to come in and take your best producers from you. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you want to be in business with high level agents, just like I do. I want to be in business with smart people. I want to have better conversations. And if you're just sitting here and you're thinking to yourself, I have my six or seven agents and things are great. You know what? Someone else is doing what you should be doing. Someone else is looking at their bottom line and always acting as if their agents are going to leave them at any given moment. And that's what you have to do. That's what I'm always doing. I'm, I'm, I'm constantly trying to recruit my agents back to me every single day. And I'm always ready for one of them to leave. And if that's the case, at least I know I'm building these relationships out in the industry and out in my market. Um, and, uh, and like, it's not that, it's not that I can just call one and they'll join me. Right. But even if I'm not looking to grow, I got to be having these conversations with people. I'll, look at what, I'll tie back to your comment and to Jim. So the per agent production, when, when we first started five and a half years ago with eight agents, we had an average of about four to five transactions per agent out of those eight. And that stayed for the next year and a half or more. That's the only agents we were attracting. So now our average agent is right around 11. 11 transactions size per agent, you know, and this is across again, 475 agents, not a team of, you know, like a dialed in team of, you know, 12 to 15 agents that are at 30 agents or 30 sides per agents, but our per agent production has tripled. So even if our size of our organization, even if we weren't adding headcount, you still have to add better agents into your organization all the time. You know, so there's, way, there's more than one way to grow. You can grow through wide expansion of more agents, you can grow through development of the agents that you have, and you can grow through attracting, even if you don't grow the number of agents, just keep attracting better agents in. So those are three really distinct ways that you can grow in profitability, revenue, and the whole bit. And if we're not focused on that growth, then uh, what's going to happen is you're going to lose ground every single time. So Mike, you have a team and you own the company. So when you're recruiting, are you recruiting kind of, to both or to one or the other at any given time? How does that look? So again, you know, when you look at who your ideal agent is, and this is why I think it's so, so necessarily important to know who you're trying to recruit and why. So if I'm trying to recruit for the team, one of the pillars of a brokerage, I mean, you've got culture, you've got training and education, you've got comp plan, you've got leads or no leads, you've got, you know, uh, facilities and geographic location. 
You've got ancillary services. These all these different things that people look or depend on for support, right? Risk management and compliance, all these different pillars. So if I'm creating messaging around recruiting and I've got a specific bucket I'm recruiting to, I'm going to have that relevant message. So if I'm trying to recruit to the team and I know that one of the value propositions for the team is going to be leads, I'll create a specific bucket for that and use that message for that group. Okay. So when you're looking to recruit to the team and you're using leads as a value proposition, are you going after uh, the newbies? Are you going after higher producers? Are you going after those broken wing agents that maybe need a little boost in production? How do you were deciding who to recruit to the office as a whole or your team? So the, the good thing is I've got a recruiting bucket at the office. I got 475 oh, people that's that's cool. from, right? Yeah. But if I don't like any of the options there and I've, I've done this, um, I, I now will go for newer agents. I, it seems that every single time that we bring on a really good, dedicated new agent, they do better on online leads than agents have been in the business for, for a while. I don't know why, but it just tends to work out that way. So then I'll target new agents. I'll build a custom list of people that have been licensed within the last six months. They don't have a lot of bad habits yet. I'll bring them in and train them up our way. Gotcha. Okay, that's awesome. Um, and so let, let's go back to Jim and Lacey. What are you guys seeing? Because you have insight to uh, probably everybody's broker kit account. What are you guys seeing in terms of how um, team leaders and broker owners are are doing this? Like, what kind of what kind of strategy it seems to be the most successful? Well, so I think multi-touch, multi-channel is is where things are going, right? So when you look at you, you probably all the brokers out there have you know, sales CRMs that are really focused on buyer and seller leads, right? And you've got, you've got a ton of automation in place. You probably have a lot of campaigns. You're buying lists, you're building lists. You probably have ISAs you're doing, right? So it's multi-touch. So it's not just, hey, I call them once. You're hitting them with, you know, drip campaigns, with calls, text, emails, but it's also multi-channel. You're probably hitting them, you know, with email on, you know, on social media. You're probably doing Facebook ads, maybe Google SEO ads, um, you know, you're doing, it, it's kind of across the board. Well, our, our, our belief is that for you to be competitive as a broker, you need to take that same type of approach and, and apply it to recruiting. Okay. And if you, if you really understand the numbers and you run the numbers and I, and I find that most people haven't, the ROI is super high and people are really focused on, Hey, if I get X number of buyer leads and I have this many agents and they're going to close this many transactions, I'm going to make this off the ads. Right. Well, if you take that same methodology and apply it to recruiting, the same thing applies, right? For you as a broker versus an agent in home sales. So what we see is people that are doing a mix of inbound and outbound, right? So you don't typically hear those words in the context of recruiting. You hear it in terms of, of you know, uh, sales CRMs, right? But, you know, you're going to want inbound leads. You're going to want outbound leads. Outbound leads are going to be lists from, you know, MLS data sets from sources like a broker metrics or uh, showing time market view, if you're up in Canada, IMS, um, you know, there's some other sources as well um, that can come from events. Anywhere where you can get a list of people that really meet your, ide your ideal agent profile, right? So in the sales side, you think ideal customer profile, who's your ICP? You need to be thinking, just like Mike said earlier, very crisply, who, who's your ideal agent profile, right? And how do I buy a data set for that how do I like drill down for people that exactly meet that profile and go after them? Which means you, once you have the data, you need a system that's going to help you drill down, right? And we've developed a system around filtering on all of those different parameters. You know, where do they work? Where's their location? Um, what is their sales production? We recommend, at least, you know, on the outbound side, that you segment the list. It's just like on the sales side, right? You don't take one email and send it out to 100,000 people. You segment the list. And you tailor it with short conversational messages. Yeah, you do thing on the re recruiting side, okay? Mike, Mike, you've been, you've been, you're like, <laughs> oh, I, I seriously, I had a thought. I'm like, I gotta get it out, right? I need my yeah. ID. Come on in. Yeah. Us, us IDs are like that. Sorry, but uh, <laughs> anyway, um, I wanted to touch on that because this is so crucially important. I'm very passionate about this piece right here. So once you've actually created your custom audience and you've got that that list or those lists really dialed in, what you're gonna find is you'll have people that you'll start messaging. We use a really good, unique system of outbound and inbound. You know, on our Facebook campaigns, for example, we're not really even trying to lead generate, it's impressions, that's our strategy. Branding. That's our outbound, 
yeah, when we're doing our outbound, people are like, oh, I've seen your stuff everywhere. We hire an ISA, literally a virtual assistant making phone calls for us, 100 to 160 phone calls a day she'll make. And she'll set three appointments or more every single day. But it helps because people have seen our stuff out there everywhere. It's omnipresence, I think is the word we're looking for. Yeah. Now, here's the important piece. And this is where we screwed up so bad in the beginning. The people that met with us and they agreed to a meeting, not maybe, maybe 30 to 50% of the time, they would join us almost right away. But the other interested party always had stuff going on. And today they still do. It's like, I've got three listings to close. I'm going to wait till the end of the year. You know, I, I've reached my cap in my current company and I'm not going to move until I, until that's, you know, back uh, until I'm being charged again. The biggest drop off that we saw in recruiting, I talked to a lot of brokers and team leaders and they've got this problem too. Those that are interested, but not right now, they fall through the cracks. They start losing motivation. So, you know, one of the important things you need to do is have the post meeting follow up. Like, Hey, I met with them. They're ready to go. They're, they want to go, but they're not ready right now. Hey, they're going to think about it, touch back with them later, or they're never coming to lead them. Right. Or just, I don't even want them. Like that's not an agent that's a fit for my company. So we've segmented in those three buckets, but when we focus hard on that second bucket, the, they want to come, but not right now, our conversion rates of people that joined us almost doubled. Hmm. So that's something we use broker kit for. And we've tailored that to make sure that we are super dialed in on that group of people. If you're not ready to come in the next week, the chances are your broker's going to talk you out of it. You're going to get more listings and more business that just distracts you. You just lose momentum. you got to stay in front of people. Well, and what I see too a lot um, that I, I probably do, I don't know, Jim, what would you say? 40, 45 demos a week. So I'm talking to a lot of brokers. <laughs> yeah. What's interesting to me is, is now seeing so many smaller brokerages that what they say to me all the time is, it's not like it used to be. I had, you know, I had my whole agent roster and nobody went anywhere, but now everyone's recruiting. So exactly like you said, Nick, like you have to be building your bench and it is those follow-up systems that you have to have in place uh, in order to, to keep, keep on them. And they will eventually. The, the, the thing is you always want to be the person in front of them when they start to think about making a move, right? You're always last if, if you're, you're coming in on the back end. But in Broker Kit, what's neat about it too is it actually forces you to push them forward in your follow-up as soon as you make any type of touch. So if I make a phone call, I can't actually even log it until I have them forward in my follow-up. So it's one of those things that just makes you, especially for those high Bs like Mike, stop for a second, pay attention, and have to push them forward into follow-up before you can log what you're doing. And then with that too, throw them on a campaign, put them on an automated drip campaign. So they're touching a monthly for you, or sorry, the campaign's touching it monthly for you. And then you're sprinkling in some calls uh, in the meantime. And that's really when your conversion starts going up. Yeah, there's a lot in there. Like, so the high D's like Mike, there's stuff in there for them. And then I'm a high I, so I'm all about campaigns. Like I, in my real estate business, when I was selling, um, I wasn't really big on cold calls. Like I, I never really did uh, expires and FISBOs um, just because it really wasn't um, my area of expertise. I liked to build awareness. I liked to um, create value and help, right? So I'm really big on the campaigns. And so I tell other team leaders in my company, I'm like, I really don't ever make a cold call. I just don't. And that's because I every single agent in my market has heard from me at least one time, but probably dozens, right? <laughs> so I've got the text messages. I got the video going. I have the emails. I even send, you know, handwritten letters out. And so when I do finally call them, um, usually it's like a referral from an agent in my office or they did a deal with one of the agents in my office. And so when I'm calling, they have seen me so many times. They're either really like, no, I don't think anyone's ever really happy to hear from me, but they're okay with it, right, Mike? Or they're just annoyed, right? Um, because I won't leave them alone. But to me, either way, it's a win because I've created awareness. They know who I am. I'm in their brain. And so to me, that's super valuable, whether they want to hear from me or they don't because they are sick of me. Either way, they know me. And so it's never a cold call. It's always a warm call. So... I, I want to draw back on something Lacey said about, you know, everybody's recruiting and, you know, Nick mentioned about having your bench full. 
keep in mind, and this stat's changing, the old, the old tenure that a person would have at a brokerage, and it's probably less for a team, is two years, or sorry, three and a half years. That's the tenure that people were spending at a brokerage. The number I keep hearing now, and I have not been able to verify this yet, but it's come out as maybe an NAR stat, that it's down to two years. People are moving so much faster right now. Yeah. So, you know, this will probably segue into a minute where we can start talking about some retention pieces that we're doing. But I do want to say this, you know, an organization as large as ours, whether you're that big or even if you're small, every one of our agents are talking to other agents every single day. And this is a feature about broker kit that we have to talk about because I'll tell you, if you're most of us incentivize agents to help bring other agents into the organization. We lost track of how to incentivize as things got bigger. But the website registration that BrokerKit has for that purpose has been huge. 80% of all the agents that joined us, no matter what we do on outbound or social media or campaigns, honestly, most of it comes from agent referral. You're That's leveraging it. their trust, right? They trust you. They like you. You're leveraging that. But if the agents don't have a clear workflow on how to refer or how to get compensated, that, that website registration has solved our problem with that in such a huge way. So Jim, Lacey, do you guys want to talk just a little bit about that? Yeah, well, we talked about, right? So there's inbound and outbound, very much like sales for recruiting. We talked about outbound and prospecting into lists, building lists, segmenting it, right? But inbound, right? So inbound's uh, really important as well. And so one of the big features that we've integrated into the system is, is an agent referral system. Many of you have a compensation plan in place for agents to refer um, new talent. If you don't, you need to get on it because that's the best source of leads out there. You're going to get the best agents because somebody, you know, when you hire people that either you know or somebody that you know and trust, trust that person, they're much more likely to turn out and succeed. And so those are going to be some of your best leads that you have in terms of conversion, but also success once they uh, join the roster. Um, so we've kind of built that in into the, you know, as just part of the workflow into the system. Uh, along with, you know, landing pages for um, inbound leads coming off your site on the careers or join now link. Um, we can also push leads in, in via the API. If you have, you know, Zapier, Facebook ads, anything like that, you want to push leads in. You know, it's all about outbound and inbound, right? It's all, all bound, right? Um, outbound, inbound, multi, multi-channel, omni-channel, you know, and, and lots of touches. I, I really like that. And, and Mike, is dropping pearls of wisdom that you don't necessarily know. But when he said, what you really care about is impressions, I completely agree with that, right? And that's why, that's why Facebook and Google are huge. They're behemoths of companies because they are an automated, they're like the easy button to get impressions out there, right? That's why they've scaled up so quickly and they're both huge companies because they drive impressions and they drive awareness for you and your business. Yeah, Mike, so you mentioned that, you know, some, some companies give incentives to, to, to refer, right? I mean, I know what my company does. I'm sure that Realty Group does something too, where like you make your agents excited about sending you referrals and all of, all of your agents are out there in the field and they're the ones making the relationships and they're the ones that should also be helping you solidify relationships with the people that they're already in relationship with. Now, like, let's say Mike has 475 agents. Let's say all 475 agents that he has took their, their recruiting landing page and posted on their Facebook page or posted it on Instagram or threw it up on Craigslist. People are going to opt in, mm -hmm. right? They're going to opt in just by the sheer volume of landing pages that are being put out there into the internet. I mean, it's just so powerful in that sense. One other thing, oh, sorry, go ahead. I was gonna say, what we even do is we allow our agents to, to go into their own landing pages and register someone on their behalf. Right. Now, think about it, the incentive we give, we totally ripped off Sam Karamian, who we love, by the way, um, over a big block because he gives away a BMW every single year uh, as a recruiting incentive, we do the same thing. So for the, this will be the third year in a row, we're giving away a BMW to one of the agents that brought in a, re a recruiting meeting. We did, they didn't have to join us. If you get us the meeting, you have an entry into the lottery. Now, that is so powerful because recruiting is all about what it, what's in it for me. Your agents won't mobilize, even if they love you, they're not gonna mobilize unless there's some extra incentive for them. I don't care what your incentive program looks like, it has to make sense to them. So people looked at us and said, why would you give away a BMW? It's a lease, but it's like $18,000 a year. That's a lot of money. Sure, but we picked up 80 agents 
and at you know per agent production, we're like a hundred hundred to one ROI on that thing. It's ridiculous, right? So you cannot I cannot tell you like just last or two three days ago, I had a conversation with an agent who did not want to recruit. I hate recruiting. Not going to do it. I'm a team leader. I'm like, do you do leads, online leads? Well, yeah, I love online leads. I'm like, take the word lead and replace it with recruit and take the word, you know, so, and then she goes, oh, wait a second. You're right. So it's the same thing. Like, it's the same thing. I'm just not recruiting buyers or sellers. It's just agents. I'm like, that's it. So it's the same thing, man. You know, if you're trying to gain business for buyers and sellers, your SOI is your primary source. So it's no different with the people you have influence with in your own office, period. Well, you know, it's interesting. And so I, I, I don't, I don't, so for me, I don't want my, I don't want my, yeah, my agent's like, I don't want to recruit. And I go, well, I don't really want you to recruit. Right? Like, that's not your job. I want you to sell homes. What I want you to do is build relationships. After you're done doing a deal, you say it's been a great, you know, hopefully it's been great. If it hasn't, then move on. But if the person's been professional, it was, you know, I had a great time doing this deal with you. Thank you so much. Uh, would you mind if my team leader, Nick, reaches out to say hello? I can tell you nine times out of 10, they say yes. Mm -hmm. Because I'll tell you what, they know I'm not just reaching out to say hello. They're not stupid. They understand how it works, but they usually say yes. And I'll tell you the one best question that I ask agents when they're meeting with me or I'm on the phone with them, I ask them, what do you like about your current company? Mm -hmm. They will always, without fail, tell me one thing they like, and then it just goes into like 10 things that they don't. <laughs> right. It's the craziest thing. Because there is always something about where they are that they don't like. Listen, I'm with Keller Williams. I've been with the company for 10 years. I love the company, but there are definitely areas of improvement. You know what I mean? We all know it with every company. So, so they, you just have to open that door and make it wider. What, what, the, what we see happen is in recruiting meetings, the actual meetings, how many of us are guilty of just feature dumping all the great things about our company? I'm just like, like vomiting. Oh. Yeah, because it doesn't matter what you have. All that matters is if, they, if, if, if all that matters is if like you have what they need, regardless of whether, whether you have anything at all, really, that's what it comes so down to. It comes down to asking them questions, figuring out what their pain points are. You know, they're going to tell you what they don't like. And if you have one thing or two things that would fill that problem or solve that problem, yeah. boom, focus there. Not to go off in too much, much of a tangent. Well, you, I'm sure that both of you guys can attest to this as a, a referral from one of your agents. Your conversion rate on that is probably so much higher. Oh my and God. with BrokerKit 2, um, we allow the your agents to be able to have their own login. Um, basically, it's just a referral screen, so it's not like they log into your CRM, but it's a referral screen, and they can send you a referral from, let's say, a Cobro directly, add a note in, but not only does it get to you and put it into your CRM for you for follow-up, but it's also kind of an accountability system too, because you can allow them to get updates about where that recruit is at in the process. So if you have, if, you know, I'll, I'd get an email as an agent if I've sent somebody a referral or I've sent you a referral and you had an appointment with them yesterday, the next day I get an email that shows me that you had an appointment with them. Well, what, is, what, do I, what I'm going to do is call that person and say, hey, I saw that you met with Nick. How did it go? And then they're now involved and engaged in helping in, in that process of getting them recruited. So the conversion rate just gets higher and higher. Nick just did, you know, what Nick just said was so, you know, we have to really touch on this. We don't want our agents to recruit any more than we want our sellers to do a listing presentation on somebody they're trying to refer. All we want them to do is connect us right. so we can actually sit down and talk. We do not want them trying to sell the company. They will blow it every single time. Right. So all we're really looking for is a way to have a connection made, an introduction made, and we need to have it trackable. You know, if you drop the ball on this and we have in the past, that's why I really appreciate the, the ability for us, our agents to go in and register. If somebody goes out of their way to refer another agent to us and they don't get the compensation, the credit, something, you think they're going to go and talk about that to other agents? They do. Or do you think they're ever going to try to recruit for you again? No, they won't. So you have to make it trackable. And you have to do what you say you're going to do for them. That's the key. Yeah. I, well, the other thing I want to touch on too is, you know, think about it, right? So Mike, you've got 500 agents, right? And how many transactions did your average agent do last year? About 11. 11, right? So, so there was an agent on the other side of all those transactions, right? So not only do, do you know, that's a significant part of probably the producing agents in, in your 
in your area, right? They're going to know who's good, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not just they're connecting with anybody they know. You know, they're they're going to they they're not just staring at a spreadsheet of names in the MLS, right? They know these people. They know who performed well, who had, you know, who was organized through the process, who managed their client effectively. They they know who's going to be an asset to the organization. And so not only are they going to convert higher, you know, once they're on your roster, they're going to perform higher too. And let's be honest too, you know, you can, you can really kind of create a custom audience based on production. And if your wheelhouse is agents doing 15 to 20 transactions a year, you can build a thousand of those in your marketplace perhaps, but what you can't do and your agents can do, we always talk about culture being such an important part of our organization. I can't tell if somebody's going to be a fit for the culture from a number on a list, but I certainly can. If one of my agents that I trust comes to me and says, look, do not hire this person. Here's why I, am I going to make that decision on the spot? Maybe not, but I'm definitely going to have in the back of my mind when I, when I meet with that agent, I've already got some things to overcome here. Right? So the reality is your agents are going to bring in people they want to work with that they feel like are a good fit. They're basically like a sales force for you. If you incentivize them to do it correctly. Absolutely. Totally, 100%. Um, so let's talk about how we, I want to talk about adding value, right, to, to, to agents, because like we said before, everybody's recruiting, right? And so I feel like, and I listen, I'm guilty of this more times than I would like to admit, um, because like, I'm not always so sure of myself or not always so sure where the conversation is going to go. Um, and I've also gotten better with my needs analysis and I'm doing this less and less. Um, but I feel like with, with the industry right now, the focus on a lot of agents' minds is how much they're going to pay into the company, what their cap is. You know, Mike runs a, 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 a brokerage where, um, you know, it, it's not, it's, it's 100%, right? 100%. Yeah, flat fee. Yep, flat fee model. Yeah, flat fee model. I'm with KW. We have a cap. Um, so, like, there's, like, this race to the bottom, Right. Like, and so I feel like uh, a lot of times we just, we just start off with that because we feel like that's what's most important because we're trying to like get to the lowest possible cost. But what you'll find is that's not usually the most important thing to people. Money doesn't drive everybody. So I'm sure Mike is sitting in appointments at times where he tells them, tells people it's a flat fee model and, and it's not something that that's necessarily appealing to them because that's not what's important. Whereas I tell someone who, um, who I'm like, listen, you know, we have this, we have an $18,000 cap, but here's what I can do for you and blah, blah, blah. And they're like, I don't care about that. Like, tell me, you know, tell me about the culture, tell me about the training, tell me about the business consulting. So like how, Mike, how are you, what are your needs analysis uh, appointments look like? How are you finding out like what's really important to the, to the person when they're sitting down with you? So, so first off, um, I do about 20% of the recruiting meetings um, for my company. My partner, Long Doan, who's a master of this piece, he's super <laughs> good with people. He really is on this piece. Um, you know, he does all, he does most of the meetings. In fact, I think he could do this in his sleep and just read a book while saying these words. Um, he's done probably 1500 of these in the last couple of years. Um, but anyway, one thing we never do is we never go to compensation. That's the last piece we cover. If, if you're there looking for the cheapest deal, then somebody else is going to come up with a cheaper deal. I don't care what you charge, right? So, but what we do is we figure out based on the conversation what their needs are. Let them talk. Like, like simple lead conversion. I'm not going to dominate the conversation and feature dump. What I'm going to do is let them talk, look for specific hot buttons, and we might have 10 solid pillars of things that we do, we, th we think we do really well. We'll focus on the one or two that we hear from them that they need to hear about. That's how we're going to really approach the meeting. But let's be honest. And Nick, you mentioned something that you market to your agents constantly, like every day, or you try to re retain your agents, recruit your agents every day. This is the piece that's probably more important than even recruiting. If you look at large companies, you know, your Home Depots and, and Bed Bass and Beyonds, where do they really spend all their money for marketing? Like the majority of it's not new customer acquisition. It's going to be repeat customer retention. And when you, the larger you get, and even in, to be honest, even in small organizations, trying to get one message, like a game of telephone, to transfer through 20 people, 40 people, or 400 people, it gets lost. You can have something great that you offer. We've lost people out of our company, and we call and say, why? Why did you leave? We loved you. Well, you know, this, this person offers this and that. I'm like, so do we. They're like, oh, I didn't even know. Right. Like, we advertise it. We post it. It's on Facebook. Look, 
the reality is what I like about BrokerKit, it gives us the ability to put a marketing arm into our business. We look at ourselves as a marketing company first and a real estate company second. We need to market our features that we have to our agents constantly so they, it's primary mind. So they're like, oh wait, I forgot that we had a CRM. I didn't even know what it was, or I don't know what the login is. We'll market how to find the login. Like literally we market every piece all the time to our agents so that they can find it. BrokerKit helps us with that. If we have an event in the office, a training, a training event, a special guest speaker, whatever it is, we're going to do a series of marketing for that, for that feature. So I think we often forget we're so focused on getting new agents in and recruiting and we got a leak in the boat where they're leaving as fast as you're bringing them in. So you have to solve that problem first before you bring new people in, I think. Well, I mean, that's, that's a topic that's really important to me because there's so sometimes there's way too, I don't want to be, I have a lot of thoughts coming all out, all, all out at once. I see that. I can't get out. Um, I don't want to be a revolving door, mm -hmm. right? Like that doesn't do anybody any good. Like I personally feel retention is more important mm -hmm. uh, at first. Get your agents bought in, get them, get them, um, you know, uh, get them really embracing your company and your model and your culture and make sure that you're pouring into them and you're consulting, consulting with them and teaching them. Bottom line is, Agents who are producing most likely will stay with you. If they're yeah. producing, they're most likely not going to leave because they're making money. So get the people you have in your company making money first. Yeah, I think that's important because you have to develop them. And again, like I said, in our company, we grew 20% this year in agent headcount, but 34% in production. So we're developing, we're, we're growing in two ways. We're developing the ones we have and we're bringing in better producers. So it's an attraction model. One of the pieces of recruiting that also gets forgotten is to really provide your social proof. Like if the proof of concept in our company works and you join us and your business doubles in a year, or 18 months or whatever it's going to be, you need to take specific examples of that and market that example. Get your third party testimonials from your agents that are growing. Have somebody talk about how they took that trip to Alaska they've been dreaming about for the last 10 years they couldn't afford to do before. You know, have somebody get on video and talk about that, push those impressions out there, and then do your follow-up. Look, the, the reality is, if you're not developing your agents, I don't care what your commission model is, why am I going to join you if I'm not gonna do any better than I was doing before? That's how I look at it. Yeah. No, I completely, I completely uh, agree with you. Um, I'll just, uh, I'll just, brag on 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 my on my office a little bit too looking at our our our, our year over year uh mike because you made a really good point so um you know we're up 25 percent uh in units closed uh, right now over last year and we are um up 24 percent in closed sales volume for the whole office um at the same time last year so it's really important for people to realize that you know, the agents that are right there in front of you, they need to be producing and you need to pour, be pouring into them. Like I just spent literally three hours in a room with four of my agents teaching them how to create Facebook ads. Like there were only four of them there, but like you got to do it, right? Because those four are going to go out into the world and say how great that was for them. And look, and I, I cannot say this enough. You know, you might put a system in front of somebody, uh, call it, call it call action or Y Lopo or whatever system you put in front of somebody and you show them how to use it and they get a transaction or two transactions or three transactions. And then you get them saying, wow, I never would have done this. You know, I think the recent one we had with Spacio, just a, a simple open house sign and registration where an agent came back and said, I, I'm getting deals from doing this, you know, get them on video, get them talking to other agents. But that proof of concept where people said, I just made 20, 30, 40, a hundred thousand dollars more than I would have without being at your company. That's a powerful testimony. And then they can say how they did it or why they did it or how you made it possible or how it made it, your organization made it possible. That's social proof. That's super important because let me, let me be honest, all the outbound calls that I get for recruiting, like people call me, hey, would you want to sit down and talk about a 100% model? I'm like, I own a 100% model, I'm not in production. <laughs> um, you've done no research, you don't know who I am, that's cool. But look, the, the reality is if you have a recruiter, like we have a recruiter uh, appointments at our ISA, if they're making calls to people that have seen our, our Facebook ads, they've seen our emails through BrokerKit, they've seen our, our text campaigns, whatever we're doing, and they're like, 
would you like to would you like to meet with Long Dome for networking? They're like, Long, I know Long, man. I see him every day. I'm playing solitaire on the toilet, and his picture pops up while I'm playing solitaire on the toilet. I'll go meet with that guy. I mean, there's an omni, and that's a, like that's happened three times. I kid you not, solitaire toilet. It's not an exaggeration. So we've had people call us and say, I because of that, I'm joining you guys. I'm tired of looking at you. I just got to come meet with you. So um, you have to provide that proof of concept. You have to provide the omnipresence, and you have to have a system. When we have our recruiter call, um, it's going to be to set up a network meeting to see if we even want to talk to you about recruiting. If you come in like, want to join me, want to join me, want to join me, it turns off putting. If it's let's network, see if we have an alignment, see if we have a fit, and then we'll take the next step from there. We get much higher conversion from that, by the way, because it's a lot safer. Now, if somebody really, and once you start attracting business and rather than chasing it, once you're out there enough, you're growing enough and people are watching, a lot of people will let you know, no, I want to meet for recruiting. I want to check you guys out. That's a different scenario. But all of this really equates to you to get to a point that you stop chasing it and start attracting it. Dude, I love that. That's a good, actually, that's a really good spot to probably, probably phase out the webinar because that's a good quote. Uh, but Jim and, and Lacey, do you want to, do you want to end on something? Do you want to just kind of throw in a little, little pointer or tip that you've been thinking about over the last couple of minutes? Well, you know, we talked about recruiting inbound and outbound, really going all bound. You all, all you brokers out there need to be thinking about how you leverage some of the same methodologies you're using for sales, you know, climb to recruiting and then retention, right? I'm a football fan. When you look at, 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 uh, at football teams, you know, what wins Super Bowls is the defense, right? Which is really retention, right? The easiest way to grow your team is not shrink. Don't let your teams, your agents out the door. Really a, a, a strong focus on retention is, is super important. What we say all the time too is, it's interesting that brokers usually come to us for the recruiting. You know, they need help getting their systems in place for the recruiting, but then they end up staying with us for a long time because of the retention, because it's for your whole in-house communication on that side. And, you know, having like Mike's 500 agents is tough to remember to keep in contact with them. It's easy for people to slip through the cracks. And so with BrokerKit, you're able to, we actually nudge you and let you know, we put them in a bucket for you and let you know, these are the people that nobody's reached out to in the last 30 days. So give them a call, give them some love, check in, see how their listings were in the last 30 days. Um, and it's those little things and those little touches that make a huge difference on whether or not an agent will, will leave you. Um, and we just make it a little easier so that you don't have to think about it all the time. By the way, my favorite feature is the mass text to my, to my mass text to my, um, to my roster. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, the best. Like that is the way I keep agents informed when we're having trainings, events. It's friggin' I'm, I love it, dude. It's like, I just want to end on that. <laughs> I can do it on my phone. Like it takes three seconds. My entire office within minutes knows about what's going on. And they can still text you on that number. They can text you back on that number. Yeah. So that's super cool too. A lot of them actually think that's my real cell phone number. So, um, but I, I love that feature. I just want to say that keep, you have 500, 475 agents. I have 150. Like that's letting them know about important events through that one text is really awesome. And it, it just gets harder to do because the more people you grow, the harder it is to get them all on the same page. So that text is one of the biggest tools it sounds so simple and so stupid, but it is one of the biggest tools to help keep people on the same page because they're going to open at almost 100% rate and read that text. That's the beauty of it. Well, and you know, the irony of it is, right, it's, a, it's our um, number one use feature within retention, as you hear from our users here, um, but it helps us with customer retention because it's so heavily used. That's mm -hmm. the irony. Right. Yeah. So, well, this is awesome. I appreciate it. If anybody wants a demo of BrokerKit, go to getbrokerkit.com. I uh, highly recommend it um, as an agent uh, and a team leader. Um, I compare it to like the follow-up boss for recruiting and retention. You know, it has, it, it's just, it's, but it's, you know, you can't really use follow-up boss for that. Like this is specific for agents. Um, all of the features are specific for, for retaining and, and, and hiring and, and, and partnering with people. Um, but if you, if you're a follow-up boss user, like that's why this was so easy for me to adapt because the two are similar in, in what they have, but uh, it's clear to see that BrokerKit is more agent centric. So I love that every morning I get reminders of like people I need to reach out to. And so um, uh, it's powerful. And if you're trying to grow a brokerage or grow a team, um, 
you know, you definitely need a product like this. So check out getbrokerkit.com, get a demo. Lacey, she gives the best demos in the industry. Uh, she's chief smarty pants. So she'll show you what you need to know. But anyway, thanks for being here, Jim, Mike, and Lacey. Um, I appreciate your time and I hope everyone got some value and learned a few ticks and tr tricks and tips on how to, on how to grow their business with, uh, getting in business with the right people. So thanks a lot guys. Have an awesome day. Thank you. Thanks.